All right, hey guys, welcome to Samco Workshop. Jason Samkovic here today. We're talking about some of the features on a Gladiator that not a lot of people are aware of. Okay, there's some nice things on a, on a Gladiator, especially Rubicon model that, that it offers that many people don't know about. Before we get into the inside stuff, let's talk a little bit about the outside. Hang on here, losing my my little notes piece that I had right there. But So when we come back here and we get into the back end of this thing, when we open this tailgate up, you will notice on there, there is two motorcycle trail marks on that back wall. You can see that checkering there, um, right here, right there. That is one there and there's one behind my cooler. Those are specifically put there so that when you put two motorcycles in the back end, you line your wheels up with those tread marks on there and it gives you the perfect place for tie downs. They're in the exact right position and, uh, to be able to tie down both bikes perfect without rubbing bars and things like that. So just little bitty details like that are, uh, are pretty impressive that they give you that factor in there um, and those kind of features. Um, Another one, we're going to close this up now, is the fact that on the Gladiator model, you get a guard right here. Okay, you get this big steel beefy guard on here, which is going to protect you if you drag this back end, if you're doing any extreme off-road and then you start, uh, uh, you know, getting into things. Because it does have a little less departure angle than some vehicles, but they give you that guard so you're not going to hurt anything on there. And the rock rails, which are right here to protect you from the breakover stuff. Um, that's a nice feature that they give you those options. Also, you know that on this vehicle, you can remove the entire roof, not just the freedom panels. You can remove the entire roof roof and the doors okay it's just a pin right here and right there they give you on the inside of here they give you a option uh, a container not only do you get the tool kit to do it but they give you a place right here for every single bolt that you pull out um, if you're removing all that stuff and you can see it's perfectly labeled on there they give you the exact stuff so that when you take out all of these bolts that are on here like back in this corner and the stuff you do to remove these back parts um, or to remove the doors they give you a setup right there to store all of them so that you don't actually lose them That's a really nice feature in my opinion. It's a great option They give you you also very rarely in vehicles today get two different mat pockets one on each seat Love that you can see mine are stuffed full of crap already That's very important to have those and I love that we get them in this vehicle where a lot of them don't um, A lot of people think that these are not a lot of room in these little compartments on the side I love them because no garbage stays in them you don't have to get into the vacuum and fight to pick out the little stuff. These are big enough. I can fit full-size water bottles, anything I want into these things even. Um, but nothing, no garbage stays in them. When I use my front one for trash right here in my door like this, none of the crumbs or anything stay in this. They all just fall right out through it. But, I mean, you got so much room in these things. I could take this big full water bottle, one liter water bottle, and I can drop these things in there like that, and it works perfect, and the door still shuts. Everything's still good. You know, I mean, it's, uh, like I said, you get a lot, of, a lot of use out of these little pockets. I really do think these are a fantastic feature. They hold all your garbage, but, again, no crumbs are going to end up in that thing. So it just makes, I, I really like them. I like them a lot. So that's a really nice feature. Now, another great feature to this truck is the robustness, all right? Um, you got to understand that this is not an independent front suspension like a lot of vehicles are. We have full uh, full size Dana 44 series front and rear um, solid axles in this thing. Uh, you know, that makes this thing incredibly durable, okay? The strength and rigidity of this thing to be able to be abused off-road is unmatched. I mean, there's no mid-size truck that can take the wear and tear that this can because of the way that this thing is built with the, the suspension, the front and rear solid axles, the whole capabilities. I mean, there's a toughness to this thing that you just can't get on anything else. Your chances of snapping axles and breaking things and there's no CV joints to go bad and all this stuff that's built up in this thing is designed to be used hardcore off-road. You got 31 and a half inches of water fording capability straight from the factory. You also are getting the front and rear lockers. We know all that kind of stuff, but as far as the hidden factor, a lot of people don't think about that. You see a lot of Tacomas lifted and put on 33s and stuff like that. These have got 35s on it. Well, you see them with 33s and then you see them out in the woods and tink, snapping CV axles like crazy or wearing CV axles out every 30,000 miles. You don't have those kind of issues when you have a solid front axle 
like you have on something like this. Okay, this thing is built to handle the wear and tear and the abuse, um, and it handles it very, very well. This is just a perfect design for a hardcore use vehicle. Now, some of the other features in here too, before I head into the inside, is that because it is a Jeep, this thing is purely designed to be modded out. There is every accessory you could think of, from bumpers to wheels to you name it, to different things you can do to this. I mean, there are people out there running Gladiators and Wranglers that are $150,000 rigs, and the only thing that's still stock on them is just a body. I mean, you could build this thing from the ground up with aftermarket parts. I mean, the options are literally endless for what you can do with this vehicle. That's a pretty cool feature that nobody else can say. Um, that's you know, so anything you could ever dream of changing if you didn't like something on it you can change every single component of this vehicle with something else that's made aftermarket that might meet your needs better that is a beautiful beautiful thing that you can do that so uh huge props to them for that you know building something that so many people want to play with um now on the inside a couple other features in here too one thing that's nice i didn't point out if you're going to have the top off on this, which takes nothing, okay, these freedom panels come out in 30 seconds, um, but you're going to take those off, or even if you're taking just those in the doors, whatever, but if you want to travel, Jeep thought about that too. When you go into a store um, or whatever, if you need to, your wife needs to lock her purse up, they give you these huge compartments back here. This one is specifically designed big enough to be able to put your purse and stuff in, and then they give you, as you see right here, a key lock, your Jeep key will lock the seat and prevent it from coming forward so you can lock any of your valuables back there. So you could literally put uh, your wallet, your cell phone, your things like that in here, put your wife's purse back there. Anything you want to will fit back in that compartment and then you can lock it and so nobody can get into it even when your jeep is wide open so they come up with some great features for you um and then when you're actually in it here and we're set up and in and driving let's get in and get set up here so a couple of features too that are really nice that people don't realize is we have sway bar disconnect on the gladiator model sway bar disconnect will let that front end articulate more because the sway bar that connects this wheel to that wheel is separate or keeps you know it transfers weight back and forth between the two when you disconnect those you can angulate that front axle a lot more beautiful beautiful feature and another one that a lot of people are not aware of is that you can use your rear locker in a rubicon model when you are in four high okay a lot of people think you let's let's show you as an example of that so here we are we're sitting here let's put it into drive for a second okay we're in uh two-wheel drive high you can see it let's just move for a minute here there we go so we're straightened out all right perfect there we go okay so we're in four high and we're gonna hit the rear locker just roll that set here we go rear locker it's gonna tell it's just gonna flash it's going to flash and it's going to flash. You can see it flash in there. It tells us axle lock canceled. Okay. Well, you said we could do it in four high. We can. But remember, in order to use rear lockers, you can't have traction and control and stuff like that on and going like that. So if we hit the off road plus pages, we tap that button and you can see it's going to change the screen. It tells us traction control is off. Okay. And it's all the four wheel drive off road plus active. We can see it on here that we're active. Okay, so we have this. It gives us all of our gauges. Now, if we look at this on here, too, we got this traction control button lit up. Um, we can turn that off. Okay, now it's on. But if we press and hold that button, press and hold it, watch. Okay, traction control off. Electronic stability control off. That is key. Now, once we return that off, which was just done by pressing that, let's do it again. So there it is. Now it's going to be, we press this and it's going to come. Let's see, now it's back on. Okay, and then we come over here and we're going to press and hold this. So I'm going to press and hold. Now watch up here. Traction control off, but I'm still holding the button. And once it says that, then I let go of it. Now with electronic stability control off and traction control off, which are two things that you pretty much want to have off when you're using a rear locker. If I hit my rear locker button now, rear, lock, or rear axle locked. We are now showing a locked axle. If I come over here to drivetrain, it is showing me rear axle is locked. Okay, so we're completely locked in and set. Um, now we cannot do the front lock 
until we go into four low that's fine but at least now we have our rear locker engaged and we have the off-road plus mode which also changes your shift points and gives you a lot more power so it's a beautiful thing to have these off-road pages and be able to monitor everything you get your pitch and your roll we're at one degree pitch one degree roll right now um, but you get all these features which is beautiful but being able to use that rear locker is a gold mine too just touch off and now rear lock axle unlocked and I'm back to it. I still have my off-road pages on, so that's a beautiful thing. So I still got that extra torque and power um, because they change those shift points around. But we can also just simply go back into four or two high and we're set. And that also cancels our traction control that we turned off. So it is literally that easy to be able to uh, use your lockers your your rear locker in four high. So it's a beautiful feature they give you on this truck. Now the other beautiful thing of this, I'm gonna drive while we show it to you, is the fact that the hood is so low. So you are exactly at my eye level right now. And look at the view that you have outside of here with that low hood. Look at how easy it is to see where your vehicle is, what obstacles you're driving through. That hood is so nice and low. And you get this amazing view around you. I mean, you get so much view outside of everything here it's just such a I mean it's just nice and upright position but your your view outside you don't have that real stupid high big hood you like you get on a lot of vehicles that makes it impossible to see I mean this is what I see exactly as I'm looking out the windshield and it is just beautiful the amount of vision that you have outside of here that is unobstructed and lets you see everything that's going on around you it's real easy if I hold this right in front of my eyes like this it's real easy to just lean out I can see everything going on out here where my tires are what they're doing um, it's just so easy to be able to see and have all of this look out here which is just awesome I mean I can't say that enough after driving all these mid-sized trucks how beautiful it is to have this kind of view in this nice upright position to see everything so just love that about this truck now the last hidden feature of this you guys may notice here or not but let's see here look listen you can hear that motor still running now I hit the brakes. Okay, I'm hitting the brakes. Why isn't it turning off? Why is the truck not turning off? Okay, what's going on? Why is it not shutting off? Let's roll forward. Why is it not going into auto stop start mode? I'm slammed on the brake. I do not have that turned off. You know, you can see you can turn it off and then it's off and, you know, you're set. But I don't have that off. That's on. Okay, why is this thing not shutting off on me? The key is actually in the dash right now for you that tells you the, 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 the telltale sign not many people know. Okay, again, it's not turning off on I me. Mean, no auto start stop. Now, the reason is because I don't have my seatbelt on. I'm out here in the woods. Okay, we're in a swamp. I'm in and out of my truck. I'm looking for sign. I'm doing things. And when you are doing stuff like that or if you are off-roading and you are climbing obstacles or going through water, things like that, it knows that you're off-roading, even if you're not in four-wheel drive, you're just out looking at stuff where I wanna stop and watch deer or whatever I'm doing. But if I'm out here putzing through the woods and I have my seatbelt off, Jeep knew that people would be doing that. And they make it where the auto start stop does not engage. It will not work if your seatbelt is disconnected. So by my seatbelt not being on, I don't have to turn that off. It's automatically off. I can roll and I can stop anytime I want to without dealing with the engine starting and stopping just because of the fact that my seatbelt is off. So when you're off-road and you're in environments like this where you're going five, eight miles an hour and you're looking at everything and checking stuff out, or like I said, dealing with some little obstacles, things like that, whatever you're doing, you don't have to deal with this stupid thing. Jeep knew that. They know they have to have this because of EPA regulations. That's kind of how it's going now. So it's mandatory. They had to put this in to meet the government requirements, but they were smart enough to know that this is an off-road vehicle. And when you're off-road, if your seatbelt is not connected, then you don't have to turn that off. It's automatically off for you. Um, it's just something they know and understand because they're off-road people. They know when we're out here and we're doing this stuff, we're probably not wearing a seatbelt for some of these things. So uh, they make it where the auto start stop is disabled automatically. So just a few things you may or may not know about your Jeep. And uh, hopefully this helped you out a little bit and you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.